super califragilistic. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. What is that show from? Hi, I'm Jess. I'm a creative director by day and a cultural, no, a third culture blob by night. And I'm Taya, an innovation manager by day and a biohacking enthusiast by night. Yay! And today we're talking about discrimin oh, discrimination. Di discrimination. Ooh. Yeah. So how do we how do we feel about that? This is a word that 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 takes a lot of time to unpack, but yes. I feel like as third culture people. We witness different types of discriminations everywhere. Mm. So what is discrimination? Once again, we Googled it. And from Google, it says discrimination is the unjust or prejudicial, prejudicial <laughs> treatment. Pre pre prejudicial. Preju prejudicial. Wow, that's a really tough word. I know. <laughs> Prejudicial. Let's pretend that's how it sounds. Okay. <laughs> Let us know. Uh, treatment of different categories of people, especially on the grounds of ethnicity, age, sex, or disability. Yeah. Mm. Prejudicial. Pre 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 Prejudicial. Prejudicial. Yes. Yes. Prejudice. Prejudice. Pride and prejudice. So it's prejudicial? Ah. Prejudicial. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. So discrimination, I feel like there's always elements of this in every society, everywhere we go. Mm. Can't escape it because humans are very flawed. Yeah. What are we going to do? Yeah. But what do you think it is in the context of third cultural adults? So first of all, I want to uh, mention why we decided to add this into our topics. Like by the time we filmed this, um, not so, like a few days before we filmed this, um, not sure if everyone's, everyone's aware of this, but Met Gala just happened and we saw this news about a photographer at Met Gala on the red carpet, um, commenting microaggressively and not so microaggressively. Well, yeah, I, I was like, I don't think that's micro, <laughs> quite, quite aggressive. Being racist, um, towards K-pop group straight in their face mm -hmm. and of course soon after you know the unwise a few unwise a aspects from this photographer is one it's 2024 what are you doing also it's met gala there's a reason why they get invited to that event also never messed up uh never mess with k-pop yeah because the k-pop fans are gonna they will find you and they found found him and they, they did, did a bunch of shit point is that incident kind of stirred up the whole um, discrimination, of, of course, in that incident, specifically towards Asian. So there's so many different elements of it. There's like racial, because third culture kids don't really look in the race, and so people don't, they don't act in the way that you expect them to because of stereotypes. Mm -hmm. um, there's gender as well, <laughs> different cultures. I don't know, in one country, maybe you act a certain way in a, with a certain gender, and then in another culture, maybe it's not so accepting of that gender to act a certain way. There's also, um, yeah, people with health conditions and impairments as well. There's a lot of cultures that are way behind in how those people are being treated. Mm -hmm. And if you're a third culture person with um, a disability and are moving around, maybe things aren't as accessible to you. And yeah. that comes from even physical or invisible or... Um, even like um, having access to um, news that have mm. visual impairment. Yeah, yeah. And um, things like that. Yeah. 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 Also, um, age. And age. Some people, some countries treat, <laughs> they have ageism, like whether you're too young, too old. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, socioeconomic classes, say, status. Some countries are very uh, classist. Yeah, so I think like um, both of us, we checked a lot of boxes from there. It's like first, we were before moving to Japan, we were in countries that predominantly white. Um, so we were seen as minority uh, based on race. 
but also women worldwide it's discriminated for centuries yeah. and it's uh, crazy how <laughs> and maybe this is just like a weird example but in america mm. i mean there's a huge thing about discrimination and yeah. racial discrimination yeah but they would rather vote trump than a woman president because she's female i mean i'm sure there's more to it but that's kind of like the message that i get from it but i think that's one uh, wake up call at least in the states not to go into too much into pop uh politics politics yeah. but that's when you realize only the big cities is more open-minded yeah, yeah but majority of the states not yeah um that's with any country as well i yeah. find you know the bigger cities are more liberal it's hard even now like um we're talking we started to talk about like what's a what's it to be a feminist and how to treat different types of genders more equally mm -hmm. it's still a challenge because i feel like when as long as patriarchy is still a thing mm. it, nothing much is gonna change yeah yeah um, so what kinds of discrimination have you faced in the various cultures? <laughs> in the long list of things, what are some of the highlights? Highlight reel. So I think my highlights are definitely being Asian woman, but also what a lot of people they don't know is I am identified as a, a handicapped person back in Taiwan because I do have and carry 22 screws in my back the whole time. But the thing is- Are it's, they heavy? You know, when when I was little, I blamed my weight gain <laughs> to my screws. screws. Like, and I, then I, I went to the doctor, much. I'm like, are they actually heavy? Cause I feel like I gain weight. And then they're like, it's like very lightweight stainless steel. It's probably lighter than your phone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So no, they're not heavy. However, I'm I'm. But the weight of the burden of it is heavy. Yeah, and also I'm actually in constant pain of mm -hmm. some sort. I'm very used to it by now, but I do still challenge like can't go to crowded places and you know a lot of roller coasters I I cannot go on That's and so yeah and then I, it definitely takes more energy out of me during the day just by your spoons are less. Yeah. But no, no one would know mm. from just looking at me because mm -hmm. all my four four limbs are still like moving as they seemingly should. Mm. But what they don't know is like that whole thing is stuck. Mm. Yeah. So I feel like uh, my highlight of discrimination, uh, definitely the most obvious, is when I was back in the states because I did go through the whole period of going into pandemic, Black Lives Matter, Asian hate, coming out of that, coming to Japan. So on the street, like I used to get racial slur all the time, right? But not only that, I think we also talked about this before is I kind of, what's it called? I kind of experience a lot of like microaggression because me being a woman, because me being Asian, and a lot of like backhanded compliments like, oh, you as a person, you're so vocal, you know, like what to say. I'm like, yeah, because I didn't have a choice. And then two, you know, like now I look this way, I have all my tattoos with me. When I go, um, go back home, not just States, Taiwan, also like in Japan, Anytime I require like some physical support, people will look at me like, why? Oh, like so you're, why would we help you? Yeah, mm -hmm. like they're like, you're, you're, you're not supposed to sit in the um, priority seats. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, a, a lot of, a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's rough. What about you? Like, because um, I know I'm pretty intact with all the discrimination incidents in the states mm. but what about in europe what's it like when you're yeah. in germany it's a different kind of racism mm. uh, i felt in canada it was based on ignorance rather than their intention to actually hurt me so for me <laughs> in this small town in canada i just kind of brushed it off being like oh hey what's up 
what's up, I'm Chinaman, like, you know, I didn't uh, lean into it, but it was more of like, yeah. they were just ignorant, and so over time, I kind of grew to accept it because I couldn't change them unless I educated them. In Europe, it was different because it felt very mean-spirited, it felt very, um, like, they actually really didn't like me for being Asian. And it wasn't ignorance, it was more like, I don't know, intentional discrimination, I felt. Um, and I think I brought up this case in this airport. Yeah. Um, and I felt that was like very, well, I guess that's microaggressions. Um, but during this Stop Asian Hate as well in mm. Berlin, there were a lot of people who were attacking yeah. Asian people. Yeah. Um, and not just like any Asian people, but Asian people who looked frail, like female and older Asian yeah, people. And yeah. I think that's the same in the States as well. So yeah. I don't know, maybe I just made a very general comment and I'm sure there's, you know, ignorant racism everywhere as well. Um, and also intentional discrimination yeah. in, in Canada too. But yeah. I think that's kind of the difference that I noticed as a <laughs> kid in rural Canada versus an adult in, in Berlin. Yeah, I think that's also a little bit in the in the states because mm. the whole myth of model minority, like even mm. though we are um, a kind of minority, somehow other minority communities they don't like us. Mm. So um, because of what they perceive right from yeah, the yeah. white supremacy, like my model minority is not a thing. Mm. Like, just because you're Asian in the States, you don't get um, the privilege like white people get. Yeah. But that's somehow the, like, the the image a lot of people have yeah. over the community. Yeah. And, like, when you mentioned about the airport incident, like, I also had a fair share from an officer one time saying that, um, I think at that time... I forgot one of the document in my luggage yeah. and a check-in luggage, so I couldn't show it. Mm -hmm. But I had the rest, right? And they have records in the system. But the officer liter literally told me that, do you know just with one button, I can send you right back and you can never enter the country? Wow. Yeah. What a threat. They're yeah. just power tripping at this point. Yeah. And then I think in that incident, it's like, but you can tell the difference between how they treat... Um, visitors yeah. that are people of color yeah and when they're not yeah i find that's the biggest thing about um that's why i wanted to move back to an asian country because i was so tired of feeling like a second class citizen yeah and i knew that you know just from yeah being in a white country was just exhausting for me to always feel that yeah i think that's why like uh when i just just moved to japan mm -hmm. it was such a like a refreshing experience yeah because it's been a very long time since i spent my time in a country that i am see as a majority right yeah racially and not saying that then everything is rainbow and sunshine right, so there's a different type of discrimination yeah. here to you know females or other yeah. genders but definitely it took a lot of heavy weight off of my shoulders yeah it tells you something that we're willing to put up with all the um things that are behind here just to escape from that overall you experience racist um moments but you count them as ignorant so mm. and because you also don't want to spend the energy to educate them yeah. you just go along with it and then that in some way, of course, kind of reinforce the whole racist or discriminative events to keep yeah. happening. But at the same times, we're already so exhausted by from yeah. the taking on all the bullets. I think it would also have been different if I lived in somewhere that had a different socioeconomic uh, classes as well. Because mm. I think I was in the poor area and they knew I was poor and they were poor. It was kind of you know, on the same level, whereas I think if I moved to, like, a well-to-do area and they saw someone that was foreign, I think it would be a little bit different in terms of how I felt uh, as a second-class citizen. Just to be clear, like, we, we know that even among Asian, right, our skin is pale. Yeah, yeah. So we are also way more privileged yeah. than a lot of people. 
Um, but even with that, like the discrimination we experience is quite, quite um, frequent. Mm -hmm. Also based on because we keep moving around, and yeah. then the the fact that we are trying to adapt into a certain society, trying to learn a certain social cue, and then among those um, those period, we receive things that it's seemingly familiar mm -hmm. negatively. Yeah. But still trying to navigate how to do anything about it. Yeah. I think the biggest difference being in a country where you're not the majority versus the country where you are the majority but maybe experience some discrimination is the discrimination is from strangers in the countries where you're the minority yeah. because you don't know them but they just judge you on what you yeah. look like whereas in the majority country it's discrimination from people that you speak to or interact with. So I don't know what's worse. <laughs> I don't think there's better or worse. There's no better, uh, better or yeah. worse. And I think, again, that's all going back to just us trying to cult switch and fit into a system or society that's not in the big, from the start built for us. Mm. I think that's why there are so many different kinds of discrimination because everything's come from that one cookie cutting system that people are expected to fit into. Yeah. And then it, in any way, you are not the perfect fit people started to judge you for it. Yeah. Yeah. What I wasn't prepared for is, let's say, for example, at work, I'm very used to standing up for myself, right? Because mm. I have to back in yeah. the States. Yeah. But at work, if I try to stand up for myself, there's a sense of I'm being super disrespectful. I don't know, like, I don't know how to read the room. Right. And it's so hierarchical. Yeah. yeah. And then that's something that's like I didn't really experience the same way back in the States because yeah. there's no such a, there's no hierarchy per se in the same way. Yeah. So whoever is there to speak up, you just speak up. Yeah. So over here, I think that's like one thing I had a minor culture shock, yeah. but also started to remember, oh, back in the days, that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I touched on this a little bit in the identity episode as well, where I returned to Japan um, after I was done college mm. to move here forever, and yeah. I was 21 at the time, Yeah, and uh, yeah, I hated it because there was a lot of sexism, there was a lot of discrimination, like, I just tried to be a normal person, and I got things like, oh, you shouldn't laugh with your mouth open, or there's all these, like, you know things about me being othered all the time that I would never, you know, trying to make friends with locals and they'd be like, oh, but you're a gaijin, so you wouldn't get it kind oh, of thing. Oh, yeah. So, you know, microaggressions and things like that. So I think my first time back in Japan when I was in my early 20s was the most unexpected and I actually mm. very quickly left because mm. I was so hurt that my identity as a Japanese person mm. did not match the reality. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So speaking of, I also um, remember another another thing that's like from work setting since this is why we moved here <laughs> mostly it, it happens at work setting yeah um but about sexism it's also very different over here i think um in the states per performative or not people are trying to do something about it like yeah. now they're trying really hard to lean in more when a woman speak right yeah but over here is still not a thing so like whenever i um trying to say something in a meeting or even just a conversation, I did realize like they tend to not pay attention or just direct like, the question to the man. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, that's a uh, nostalgic <laughs> to yeah. me. And also like one time I heard this. I wasn't there in person, but there was this like supposedly women empowering event at um, someone's job, and then they said. What they heard is some panelists telling the women to dress in a certain way so they don't give a wrong idea to men. But you know, like... How is that empowering? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, we're here to support you. Let, let us teach you how to dress. Yeah. But you know, like, again, back in the States, we have the privilege of because everyone's starting to talk about it. We're more vocal. Yeah. So everyone's just like... We dress how we dress. It's your problem to think yeah. how you think. 
Um, yeah. So that's another thing I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. You know what I find also in Japan is that、um, discrimination is very hush hush. Yeah. So in other places, it's quite obvious, but here it's very,、um, what do you call it, like two facedness or, you know, they put on that mask or passive aggressiveness, I think. So there's a lot of discrimination in their mindset, but、yeah. it's not outwardly evident. They don't want to rock the boat. Exactly. So it's hard to pinpoint or it's hard to call people out on discrimination because it becomes passive aggressive microaggressions. As TCKs, we also get to pick which culture that we identify with depending on the situation. Yeah, we talked about this.、Yeah. Like,、um, in my favor, I get to choose what kind of nationality I'm going to call myself. Right, like after. Boba tea. Boba tea is definitely、yeah. Taiwanese. Japanese love Taiwanese. Yeah. So, in their eyes, I don't mind calling myself Taiwanese. Yeah. And not mention I'm American. And then they probably will think I'm so cool. Because I also speak American accent in English. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, that definitely helped because, in, in, in all seriousness, that's also a way to protect yourself. I feel like back in the States, I definitely avoid mentioning I was born in Taiwan. I spent a certain amount of time in Taiwan before I go to the States. Yeah. Because a long time ago, when we had our first episode, I did say about the naming, I did say about like how people have. Assumptions over when you say where you're from, if it's not some culture they're familiar with, they always just see you as, oh, then maybe you have problem comprehending for some reason. <laughs> yeah, or、well, we don't want to hire this person because. Yeah, and then they, they start to like nitpicking how you say things,、yeah. how you like form an opinion. Yeah, all well, that. Just like in the States, there are so many studies where people have changed their name from like. Um, a foreign sounding name to an American sounding that's name. That's me. That is that's, you. That's me.、Yeah. And also, like,、um, we also talked about the language part. If I didn't say I was from Taiwan and I just straight up talking to you, and then you will feel like, oh, Jess's English is perfect. The、mm-hmm. moment I said I'm actually from Taiwan, English was once my second language,、mm-hmm. you start to nitpick in your mind, being like, Oh, maybe the way she said that sentence formed really weird.、Mm. So I think in the States, I'm like, I'm American. And over here, I'm like, I'm Chinese. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm blessed in that both、um, Canadian and Japanese are non polarizing for the most part, depending on、mm. where you are. But I think more in the workplace setting than I say I'm Canadian, just so I don't have to deal with all the politics of being Japanese in a、yeah. Japanese workplace. Yeah. Yeah. I think also, like,、um, this is like not so often being brought up, but there's also another incident. I went to this nail salon, and then all the aunties, they're from China. And、um, in the beginning, of course, everyone's like talking English. They did not know how much Chinese I, I know.、Mm, you have that a lot, actually, even、uh, here. Yeah. yeah. And then. So, but then they ask in English, like, oh, where are you from? And I'm like, oh,、um, I'm from Taiwan. I was expecting them to be nice to me because I'm like, oh, we're like, you know, same ancestor. <laughs> and then, but straight up in front of me, they're like doing their thing, but they start talking among each other. Yeah. In Chinese, starting to be like, oh, but you know, like, Taiwan's not a country. Like, it's, yeah, I don't know why they keep telling,、uh, telling people they're like Taiwanese when. They should just say they're Chinese. And then right、Whoa. in front of my face. And I'm just like,、oh, I don't know, man. Like, should I just tell them I know everything? Or should I just like,、uh, I, sh- I think hush, they hush. know that you would know, right? I don't know. At this know. point, they're kind of just like trying to. No,、know. but there's also like an、um, impression in, in the States that if you say you're blank American, and then they will assume, a, a special, especially older generation, they're like, oh, you probably didn't really study in language school or weekend school when you're a kid. So.、Yeah. You probably understand the most, like the minimal yeah, in yeah. that language. Yeah. So I also yeah, experience discrimination as such、yeah. when it comes to nationality. That's true.、Um, which countries do you think are doing well in dealing with discrimination? <laughs> Throwing it back at you. <laughs> <laughs> doing well? Yeah. Or how do they deal with discrimination? Is there any sort of way that you think has worked better? I think I can only speak for the, the country that I spent. 
my most time in, which mm -hmm. is the States, right? And then I, like I said, there's a privilege in people are encouraged to speak up. There is a privilege in people are um, more um, celebrated when you are trying to stand up for yourself mm. in different scenarios. Yeah. And it's almost ironic because recent years when people are trying to speak up for discrimination, it's almost like a trend. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. But there's like a bit of fake wokeness. To fake, it. fake wokeness. But in a way, but it's better than nothing. Exactly. In a way, in hindsight, is that has been a way for people to adjust their corporate system, adjust yeah. like how they um, share their resources, and you know, trying to help on surface level or not, any way they can huh. towards different minorities, different types of. Um, community that's being discriminated. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go right out and say Asian countries are really bad at dealing with <laughs> Because it's kind of like, don't ask, don't tell. Um, yeah. People don't want to talk about it. It's all hush-hush. They don't, they pretend that it doesn't exist. Because yeah. Because they're, they li we all live in a perfect world. And I, I don't know if that's yeah. like that in Taiwan as well. Yeah. It is. I yeah. think it's frustrating to me personally just because I've I had been pretty vocal back in the States, especially during the Stop Asian Hate. Yeah. And why it was so exhausted to advocate subjects, matters like this is because not even in Asia, like Asian community in the in the States, it's the same thing. It's yeah. like if your ancestor and, and your, your parents, they taught you to be more hush-hush, yeah. it's so hard to like bring people together and be like, yeah. We all recognize there's a problem and unjust um, behaviors towards our community. Let's do something about it. Mm -hmm. Like the first time, few times when when I started to address those issues and then openly talk about my experience, I would get comments from people within the same community being like, why are you trying to cause us trouble? Like, why are you trying to shine lights yeah. on us when you're when all we want to do is just like live in peace? Yeah. So it's yeah. really challenging. Not to mention like come back to Asia. That's just the thing. Yeah. People don't want to talk about it, even yeah. though everyone's like exhausted from being discriminated in so many different ways. Like yeah. women being treated a certain way that's not right. That's like really fucked yeah. up. It's a whole but, societal mindset. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure, like, if someone's trying to say something, a lot of women would be like, why are you trying to do that? We didn't ask you to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, if you're dealing with, like, sexuality injustice, the same thing. If you're dealing with, like, racial justice yeah. in Asia, the same thing. Like, it's frustrating. Yeah, it really is. And even if you, you know, have a discrimination case and you wanted to deal with it, going to the police is often not going to do much as well in many countries as well yeah yeah so i think um or saying that something is a case of discrimination is hard to prove you have to have hard evidence again it's like the microaggression how, how are you gonna prove yeah that this person's being sexist or racist or ableist you're or... like yeah why and then you're like yeah because they're staring at my legs well, well then why are you wearing short skirt <laughs> yeah things like that happens all the time yeah it's so sad yeah. Change doesn't come without challenging the status quo. I know. know. And change only, and people only do that when they're dissatisfied. And so people who are already happy, like, you know, the rich people. Yeah, but it's just like the privilege. Um, even what I often um, remind myself mm -hmm. and also um, my friends who are back in the States when we're trying to talk about this topic is the reason why we get to leave in peace is because people who are risky, risking their safety, they're mm -hmm. risking their, their peace to fight for something so that we get to live in a, a system that's like, oh, we don't see anything wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how do you think we can effectively deal with discrimination as third culture kids or anyone really? I was an activist for Asian um, API community in the States. And, but I wasn't the one who was like, trying to go, uh, I didn't go out and protest and stuff. Why? Because my status is on visa. 
the moment you get caught in those events, you get deported, right? Mm. So a lot of people, they also didn't know that side of it. They're yeah. like, Jess, you call yourself an activist. We don't see you on the street yelling. And I'm like, yeah, because safety also matters to me. Yeah. Um, but one thing I learned is it's really draining to soak yourself into that kind of environment. So I really don't blame anyone who chose to have their peace, but just like it, do anything you can to survive, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like some people, they're built to have more bandwidth and space to educate other people, which is good. Yeah. I, I feel like if any, any, anyone des deserve the access to resources to make themselves better, no more. Yeah. But it's also on them to educate themselves. Yeah. On the other side, as minorities of any sort or people who get discriminated, it's your choice to be the educator, mm. the the shepherd, or you just want to follow. Yeah. It's it's really Or at least no... even if you're following or even if you're, you know, staying quiet, at least be a supporter somehow. You don't yeah. have to be vocal about it, but if something happens where they need your support or Again, Maybe it's such a <laughs> talks to you about it. Yeah. yeah, but it's such a challenge, um, challenging mindset, especially. Yeah. Let me say it straight up in Japan. Yeah. The time that in my previous job, someone with the similar identity come to me and tell me to shut up. Not straight up because they don't do straight up. Right. But in a way that, oh, I will suggest you next time not to talk about this, like, so straightforwardly. Maybe just keep it to yourself or, like, oh, like, I know how you feel, but also, like, maybe they have... It just let it go because, you, you know, like, boys will always be boys. Ooh, yeah. That kind of comments, I get that more than five times yeah. so far yeah. that I'm in this country, which I really don't endorse. Yeah. <laughs> I find the best way to deal with discrimination is just kill them with kindness or yeah. ask them to repeat themselves if they say something that's discriminatory or rude. Mm. Yeah. So anytime that's not even just with discrimination, but if someone says something off color yeah. about me or my character, um, unless it's warranted, of course, I'm sure I do a lot of stupid shit, but then I'm like, hey, can you repeat that? Or yeah, just ask them to be like, yeah, wait, what? You're, you're way kinder than I yeah. am. Or just be like, what did you, can you, can you clarify what you meant by that? Yeah. Because in one, you either give them a chance to realize they're an asshole or two, then they have to explain what they meant and maybe they didn't actually mean it in a certain way. So yeah. I, I am more aggressive in that, like, mindset, or yeah. I'm more, I'm less forgiving, mm -hmm. let's say. Not that I'm less forgiving, but it just, like, I think, at least in the States, the the whole thing about being discriminated, or being a minority, or being yeah. a BIPOC. You're just fed up. Yeah, because yeah. we've dealt, we as a whole, dealt with so much shit. Yeah through generations so that the other side can get to do whatever they want. Yeah. Now you don't get to say that because I didn't know that was harmful. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like everyone should hold themselves accountable. If you don't, if you didn't mean it, own up to it saying that I didn't know better, but I'll do better next time. Yeah. But I don't, like, I used to kill people with kindness in that situation, but the amount of discriminations I witnessed on, on my friends and onto myself, I'm like, you know, enough is enough. Yeah. Hold my earrings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, if it gets physical, then yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, yeah, For yeah. Sure. So like when you face discrimination, uh -huh. you having this multiple cultural background as a TCK has uh -huh. helped you navigate it either better or in a way to For shine sure. light on the discrimination. For sure. Because yeah. I feel like the blessing in disguise... <laughs> of being a TCK and exper experiencing slash witnessing yeah. um, different uh, discriminative incidents is you got your practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. so Well-seasoned. You're well-seasoned. So you learn, you start to gather vocabularies, you start to have... Like identifying um, what you feel. Yeah, yeah, because definitely like years back, I didn't, even though I felt weird in certain situations, didn't yeah. know why. Right, that's just with the microaggressions as well. Yeah, yeah. but now, like, I, I can know why. I can identify exactly which part made me uncomfortable because the things I've seen, the, the things I've heard, the mm. things 
I personal experience. Yeah. I will bring bring up one challenges though. Mm -hmm. It's like you know how I mentioned about the whole myth of、um, model minority.、Mm -hmm. I think that's a global thing, by the way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But specifically in the states, the whole model minority. Took a toll on a lot of us when we were trying to speak up for ourselves. I had the honest conversations with my friends, which was like very necessary. It was really hard and difficult to kind of have that conversation respectfully because everyone's like very emotional. Very emotional. This is I、like、hit so close to the home. Yeah. And、um, but we're trying to understand each other. I think that's the beauty of it. Is like you're trying to understand one another. Yeah, because there's so many different sides to the story, right? Exactly. So、mm -hmm. we're not. So she, she,、uh, she was like. I just want to try to understand like why all of a sudden a lot of Asian activists they start to speak up.、Um, this is news to me, and then I kind of explain the cultural aspect. I'm like, you know, as as Asian, at least to me and then a lot of my friends that I know, we were taught not to say anything in majority of incidents. So even anything happened to us, if we can swallow it, we'll swallow it.、Mm -hmm. And then, in order to survive, we were not taught to have this very outspoken. Um, like unity spirit for the community, but we're taught to be very passive so we can keep the peace. Yeah, yeah. And then just don't, you know. I want to make up the phrase, but just like shake the river. So the <laughs> shake the river. What? Shake the river. Shake the shake the lake. I don't know. I have this image in my head. I'm butchering it. Anyway. Just、um, so I was like explaining the context,、mm. right? So it's not that the hate crime is a new thing; it's been happening. Like there are so many books about it. There are so many people who actually, if you go into local news, you're like maybe find one one column of some、hate、Asian、crime. grandpa got、yeah. got attacked, or some like bodega or laundry mag got attacked, but. Nobody is talking about it because I just, unfortunately, part of the culture. Yeah, it's、and、probably also not classified as a hate crime. Exactly,、yeah. because again, nobody is like advocating. Yeah. As much,、um, we started to have the privilege to do so because of social media. That's because true. Because people、yeah. started to share videos. That's how we started. Yeah, I feel like there's so many that can go one way or the other though. Because now with all these Karen videos, for example,、mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you have all these people who are freaking out on video, <laughs> but we don't know what happened before that. Exactly. Again, everything、yeah. is about context, right? Yes. So、yeah. I think、um, that's why I'm just I, getting fed. Yeah. What, what that's why I didn't、see. mind to before I react to a comment before I react to. To a certain message, like when I was being vocal, I got death threats, really fucked up comments through through social medias. But instead of immediately react to it and being affected by it, I tried really hard to be like, "If you're willing, do you want to have a conversation about this? Because、mm -hmm. I'm curious why you why you think that way." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's better with more understanding and communication. Yeah, and then and then because me and my friend had that conversation, right? We realized that it's really a huge a huge part is because we're all to say bluntly fooled by the same system. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's very simple. That、mm -hmm. was it. So anti disestablishmentarism. What does that even mean, actually? I, I don't just really、know. like you that and, word. You and your big words, man. <laughs> Super califragilist. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. What is that show from? What is that from? It's from something, like what、well, the the big Heidi. words. Heidi. Heidi. No. The big words. Mrs. Doubtfire. No. No, that's Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now you're discriminating all the nannies. Is that nanny discrimination? Is that a new category? <laughs> I don't know. I think that's ageism. <laughs> that's a nannist. So, as a final question to wrap this up, how can we, as a TCK community,、um, use our unique perspective to help fight discrimination or you know bring light to it and promote inclusivity? Start a conversation.、Hmm. I feel like personally, I think don't don't be afraid to ask. Questions, yeah, 
Um, get some understanding of other perspectives. Yeah, and then don't be afraid to be corrected. Because mm. I personally ask a lot of dumb questions to to my friends in other communities, and then I will be up from being like, call me out if this is yeah ignorant. Call me out if this is not okay to ask. Yeah, keep an open mind. Communicate that you can be called out because... You yeah. know, when people come to you very aggressive about an opinion, you're kind of always afraid to tell them, well, maybe, you know, there's this, this, and this, because yeah. they're just so passionate about it. But if you come at it, you know, you can come at it with emotion, but also be like, but tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. and I think even especially in Asi- Asian community, Asian world, <laughs> Asian, Asian world, world. Asian country, <laughs> Asia, <laughs> um... Don't be afraid to, even with um, people you know, like closer friends, to start having those conversations. It really helps. Like, yeah. I majority talked about my my race, yeah. but it applies to all kinds of different um, areas and categories, Yeah. right? But before you start to ask questions, if you just functions with your assumptions, that's all why there are so many dif- discriminations. Because yeah. our assumptions usually wrong. <laughs> uh, humans are very bad at assuming our assumptions or it's guessing. It's usually wrong. Yeah, it's usually wrong. Yeah, so, so always do your ask research, people. ask questions, don't generalize. Also, pick your battles. Not everything. Exactly. Is, That's another you know, thing. You're gonna be drained if every time. Exactly. So yeah. I think it's again, it's a personal choice. Don't feel that you have to. Mm. It's hard enough. It is hard enough. To survive. To be alive. To be alive. Tell us, have you ever felt discriminated against? I think that's like a beginning of a rap song. Eminem does something like that. Drop the bar. Drop the bar. Have you ever felt discriminated against? Okay, that's I terrible. Terrible. Do, do, do. That's terrible. Yeah, but again, this is um, just the beginning of this topic. There's so many different things. Again, we recognize our privilege as well. That is true. Um, the fact that we get to sit here comfortably talk about things <laughs> mm. itself is a privilege. Huge privilege. Um, and when it comes to privilege, it comes discrimination. We didn't even get into political or religious discrimination as well. Oof. Which, those like start wars. That's those huge. start wars. But uh, I feel like that's a very touchy subject. It's time for a contemplation of the day. Yay. All right, GS. I think GS. <laughs> GS. I like that. Let's see what our magical box brings to us today. Remember, wherever you go, there you are. Ooh, is that kind of related? There's some sort of philosophical tie back. Wherever, wherever you, go, you go, there you are. There you are. Are you? Where are you? You are. Oh, there you are. There All you right. are. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> drop a comment on whatever your platform you're listening in or watching. If you're watching from YouTube, hit the like and drop, drop a, a comment. comment. If you're listening from Spotify, follow us and drop, drop a, a comment. comment. If you are on Instagram and found us, follow us, reshare, and drop Drop a comment. comment. And also, if you are Gen Z enough to be on TikTok, uh, share and drop drop a a comment. comment. So, drop us a comment. We love hearing your stories. Yeah, and thanks for tuning in. Till next time. Stay crazy. Hey.